Ε, Jonas, welcome. Jonas Jensen is a sustainability specialist working at Zimes Gamesa Renewable Energy. He has an educational background as Master of Science in Environmental Engineering and PhD in Circular Business Models, both from Alborg University. Jonas has spent the last eight years working for Siemens Gamesa and has been involved in recycling projects of wind turbine blades and development of the newly developed recyclable blade. Jonas, the floor is yours. Thank you and uh, thanks for, for hosting this event and, and for in inviting me today. So yes, as, as you just said, I will give you some of the perspective uh, from Siemens Gamesa on uh, decommissioning and recycling of existing blades, but also uh, put a bit of lights on, on our recyclable blade. Um, yeah. So I think the broader picture is, is more or less clear for, for most uh, now that all the steel parts from a play, from a tur wind turbine is under control from a recycling perspective. When we add up all the materials that we put into a wind turbine, uh, all the energy spent on creating these materials, all the energy spent on installing, servicing the wind turbines and recycling those, what we see is a really low CO2 footprint of wind energy. What we call life cycle assessment shows that the CO2 footprint of a kilowatt hour from, from wind is between five and 15 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. That is in contrast to the world average for electricity of 475 grams and, and fossils uh, in the upper range of, of 800 grams per CO2 per kilowatt hour. So we already come in what we call our footprint from a really good point of view. Then of course, uh, ambitious as we should be, we want to increase the recyclability of our products to the largest possible degree. That means that we have to focus on the composites. Um, and that will be uh, the topic of, of what I will show you now. So just to show what Alexander uh, showed before in, a, in, in another diagram, there are multiple uh, recycling concepts or disposal concepts for blades. There's the disposal route of, of landfilling. So basically putting uh, the composites as an inert material there, so it will not leak anything to the uh, external environment. So it's a temporary storage of, of carbon emission, if you want so. But of course, the ambition level should be higher that we utilize the resources that we have spent energy uh, creating, so we also reclaim these. What is happening, as, as Alexander also alluded uh, to the large degree in, in, in Europe is that the blades will be uh, chopped up, shredded into uh, relevant sizes, and then fed into cement co-processing. Then the resin will, will replace uh, the fuels for this, and uh, the glass fibers primarily will replace sand or, or silica for the process. So you get some, some sort of use. Reuse of blades or what we call reprocessing is, is actually more lifetime extension project, right? So using some of the properties of composite, which we know are good, lightweight, durable, uh, all these uh, to, to second, second application before eventually needing to recycle. And then what have we tried there? For recycling many things, try different uh, structures, try to make furnitures like tables that you see here, pick fences for, for, for stables and barns. We have made scooters uh, that we even got the, the Crown Prince of Denmark to, to try and, and other applications of, of the shredded material that, that me also showed, try to cast that into new application. It can also be pyrolysis, so gasifying or getting an oil out of the resin and then uh, fibers out that can be used for, for various purposes. The last thing is the chemical recycling, um, using acids, temperatures, or and pressure to, to, 
to separate. So looking at the pictures, it all looks nice. There are plenty of, of possibilities. So, so what are the, the remaining challenges one could ask? I think me also somehow alluded to it. One thing is to find the technology and make that cost efficient. What is also needed for cost efficiency is that you need volume. And that technology and volume needs to be coupled with a business model. So we as OEMs are not world champions in recycling. We are not world champions in connecting secondary material to the use applications. So I think there is a market need for further optimization of this where the use of secondary material into primary production is needed. We are part of the, we have been part of several projects trying to demonstrate technology, trying to demonstrate solutions and trying to demonstrate um, value chain. So Genwin project, uh, mainly out of Denmark, Live Breu project, EU funded fiber reuse uh, project, all advancing the technologies. As, as me also told, we are now part of the Decom Blades project where we as an industry are working together to combine the technology with the volume, with the business model. So how can we as an industry help facilitate that these technologies I showed on the previous page are actually being used. So we lower the environmental footprint even more. So we lower the cost of recycling and so that we get uh, interesting products out of, of the blades of the composites after they have been producing clean electricity for many years. All these projects, of course, also give learnings to how can we do it better for the future. So taking these learnings in, in designing for recyclability, we have now launched what we call our recyclable blade. So the background for, for launching the recyclable blade is that we as a company have committed to have fully recyclable blades by 2030 and fully recyclable turbines by 2040. We have been supporting the Wind Europe uh, call for landfill ban. So we want to drive the volumes of composite into recycling industries. Um, yeah. So the recyclable blade has been a journey. Um, where we have now produced and are producing the first blades for commercial projects. So the first blades rolled out of our factory in Denmark, Olbo, uh, the start of 21. And, and the first projects using the recyclable blades will be installed in 22. Uh, and then we expect to have, uh, be ready to offer full uh, projects from 24. The first projects will be installed in, in Germany, but, but it's not limited to, to any geography. So what is the recyclable blade? It is a blade that is from a property point of view, strength-wise, service-wise, exactly the same as our normal blades. But um, we have now configured the chemistry so that it can be dissolved after being decommissioned and, and then the materials can be reused. So it has been a project that was concepted in 16, then active project since 2018. It has included um, resin development, uh, testing of, of the resin and recyclability testing then qualification of that material and then full-scale production and, and soon to be installation of these blades. So what is the process able to do? What you see on the second part is a blade tip being lifted from, from this uh, steel container where we have a mild acidic solution. So it's basically the same process as making pickles for your burger. So you, you put uh, the blade into the acidic acid uh, and then elevate it to below 100 degrees for a couple of hours. Then you would be able to separate the resin from the fibers and the core materials. 
these need to be rinsed and then the materials can be recycled into new products. The, the interesting part here is that the resin becomes a thermoplast, so it will be possible to use it as a plastic that you can heat up and mold, use that for, for some cycles for various products, and when that has been done, it can be chemical recycled into the base components and made uh, new uh, blades out of it uh, if, if needed. The recycling process is really mild, so we only see a 2% decrease in in the strength of the fiber material, uh, so so and and also low energy consumption, which means that you also drive down the cost of the process and the, up the value of the materials that comes out of uh, of the blades. So the the blade the this is now tested by us and by our partners, the Danish Technical University, and by our resin supplier. It has gone through all the mechanical static tests, fatigue tests, uh, health, safety, and environmental uh, evaluation, and so on. So fully compatible with, with our products ready uh, for the market. So we believe the future is recyclable. We believe this is a good first step towards a fully recyclable blade and a fully recyclable turbine. We also believe that it can help lower the environmental cost of the blade, but also the uh, financial cost of the blade when you have to um, take care of it when, when the turbine has been producing clean energy for, for many years. And it's a really, really simple process that should be able to be performed close to the wind farm. So no big logistic concepts are, are, are needed. And using environmental impact assessment also shows a decrease in the um, in the environmental footprint by the fact that you are able to re re enter the materials into the material loop. So the resin as a plastic, the fibers as as fiber application. So I think there's progress technology development can be set both on, on the existing blade fleet, but especially also for, for the blades that we will produce going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, we have some questions from our audience, but I will make uh, to all of you during the end of 